so thanks Pekka for the introduction and I will continue more, more related to our novel new product or new, new construction technology and this is more about the uh, wood and water interaction so we have solved solved this problem how we could utilize wood in really wood construction in really humid environment so my name is Pasi Herranen I'm a CEO of vacuum insulation solutions we are a, a startup from Finland a spin-off from Aalto University and our brand name is vacuum wood tech and we are offering this simple and sustainable plywood construction elements so firstly let's take a quick peek to the building physics so here we have here we have uh, two solutions or general ap approaches how do we uh, plan a, a building envelope so on the left side you can see this uh, permeable structures so when talking about wood construction this is the this is the general solution so during the moist season uh, this solution uh, the, the moisture content of the wood and and material inside uh, it's it's like rising the moisture content is rising but during the dry season uh, this this structure is able to dry out so this is the, no, the general solution we utilize today when we talk about wood construction. But the, for example, in Finland, this might get a little bit problematic because of the climate change. So in the future, uh, uh, it's predicted that the there is much more rainy seasons in Finland compared to the, to the dry seasons. And people are worried that is the, is the dry seasons enough to keep the structures dry so so as the winter is might be chasing into more wet conditions so the Finnish building stock might be suffering heavily in the future but then let's uh, have a look to the to the other approach so there is this other approach which is not utilized in wood construction of today so it's it's this totally encapsulated structures so so firstly this approach is that we try to uh, avoid uh, the moisture to get inside the element but if you utilize wood in this kind of solution uh, the problem is that if the moisture gets in uh, whenever the surface damages and, and the moisture moisture gets in it is the moisture content starts to accumulate during the time and we will reach a time that there is too much moisture for the wood material itself and the biodegradation of wood starts and the problem for this solution is that we have haven't had a, a efficient way of removing that moisture in, in the history of building building physics but but our solution we have we have managed to out, overcome this this uh, this problem but let's go to the uh, second slide so so the other tasks when we have Pekka was also talking about this this uh, this topic so so modular construction uh, in the future future we should be uh, building more modular construction and if the building needs, needs to be demolished or removed we could reuse the modules again for the different different spots so this way we could like uh, uh, change the sustainability aspects in the construction industry heavily uh, we are not uh, restrict to the life life cycle of the entire building but instead of that we are measuring the life cycle of each modules but in the past the problem has been that we actually don't know how good conditions the old old used models are can we reuse those for the another location and this is also something we have been we have been tackling tackling with our our solution now but in a high high level this kind of uh, uh, modular construction solutions would be 
even beyond the circular economy in practice of today. So it would be simple that when we erase a building, we will just uh, uh, take this one module to the next building site and reuse that if we just know that it's in it's in good condition. And here is our solution. So uh, it's called uh, VIS technology. Here you can see here you can see at the picture a plywood and element frame at the front. Uh, so, so it's a large scale construction element manufactured mostly out of plywood. It's a hollow structure and the plywood is, uh, the element frame is designed in a way that it's strong enough to withstand a vacuum close to zero bars inside the element. And then we uh, need to cover this element as watertight, as airtight as possible. So we are we are in purpose doing this uh, this encapsulated structures out of wood. And then when we have these two these two uh, uh, solutions, we can simply attach a vacuum pump into the element whenever needed, and we can start to underpressurize this element, and we can reach as low uh, pressure inside the element that the the moisture absorbed to the wooden element frame starts to boil inside the element and transforms into gaseous form. So we can remove this unwanted extra moisture whenever it's needed. So we can we can constantly keep the wood material in dry conditions, even in really humid environment, because the the moisture struggles to get in, in into the element. And if this happens, we can simply remove it and it's dry as new. So this is our solution. And also, also we need to know when this, uh, when this moisture removal needs to be done. So every element is equipped with EOT sensors, which are constantly re, uh, monitoring the moisture content of our wooden element frame. So we of course know when we have to do this maintenance. And we have done some, um, some LCA calculations. So, so this element has a carbon negative status. So there, there is uh, the wooden element frame stores more carbon long time compared to the production emissions of the other materials needed are, 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 are providing carbon CO2 emissions. And we are aiming for, for a really long life cycle. Uh, over a hundred years life cycle, and we have really strong, strong claim to reach that. And also, we have really good insulation properties for this element. So, uh, this certain elements has uh, this uh, U value under 0.2. So it's actually, actually quite good already. And here at the picture, you can also see the finished version of the prototype elements behind. So, so we covered this element with a really thin aluminum layer in order to get this uh, water tightness and air tightness needed. But in the future, we are aiming to develop a transparent coating for the element so the, the wooden surface would be, would be visible for the outside or as the facade of the building. And uh, we have a manufactured a pilot facility. Here you can see a picture. So we, so we had two carpenters working at Aalto University uh, to, to manufacture seven of these elements. So these elements were uh, 20 square meters of size, size. And so there is three roof elements and four wall elements. And we even have a flat roof in this, uh, in this pilot facility. And actually, the purpose of this pilot facility is, is a scientific vertical farming unit. So there is a, a plant scientists are doing a plant a plant research, cultivation research inside the facility. So we actually have a, a greenhouse-like uh, conditions inside this facility. So it's really humid, really moist, warm warm environment. And we have noticed that. Uh, after two years of experimenting, uh, these elements are are like immune immune to the humidity 
of the environment. So, so the coating is so, so airtight, so watertight, that the humidity can't affect the wooden structures at all. But as we have a, a flat roof, uh, then we had a snow load for over two winters, and then the snow is melting. We have, we have water on roof, so if there is even the smallest, smallest leak at the element surface, of course, the water gets in, into the element. And, and now we have been measuring this, uh, uh, this, uh, this aspect, and, and we have noticed that uh, we only have to do the maintenance once per two years. So we already have this really, really, really watertight uh, solution. Uh, with with really low maintenance. So after two years of experimenting, all the wooden structures are are really dry, actually extremely dry, dry, and we are really happy with them with the results of this. And uh, other topics. So so as a vertical farming facility, even in in uh, Nordic winter, we don't have to warm up this. Uh, or heat up this facility when the cultivation process is going on. So, so actually, the insulation properties of this technology is so good that the LED modules inside the facility provides enough you know, enough heat to warm up this facility year round in Finland. So, so compared to the glass greenhouse cultivation, we are saving lots of lots of um, thermal energy energy for the cultivation process. And also uh, for the pilot facility, we didn't have to utilize concrete at all. So we have this, uh, this uh, element structures on top of, of, on top of this uh, load carrying frame. frame. And hopefully in the future, we can utilize also wood for this, for this load carrying frame. But for the pilot, we still had to utilize uh, steel steel structures. But yes, everything is uh, seems seems to be working really well. What comes to the technology and uh, the vacuum drying phenomenon has been proved to happen in this real environment. So, so two years ago, summer 21, I uh, vacuum dried three of these elements on site. So I just plugged a vacuum pump into the element and, and uh, removed the, the unwanted extra moisture in, in summer of 21. So, so it seems like these elements will ha uh, are having like the maintenance interval over two years. And some of the elements, it seems like they, they will reach already a 10 year of, of a maintenance interval. And here's the future future potential. So this is the last slide. Uh, so as we can reach this really low vacuum inside this uh, wooden element frame, we can in the future we could exploit this this uh, this state of pressure also as uh, super insulation. So so actually when I was I was developing this uh, this technology, I, I found out this other technology which has been developed actually in Germany. Uh, it's a Zai Bauer Institute in Germany. They are doing this energy, energy research. And they have been developing this technology called vacuum superinsulation. And they have two, two metallic cylinders. Um, so, the, so the smaller cylinder is inside the larger cylinder. And they are evacuating the, the, the volume between the cylinders. So, so they are reaching really low pressure state inside the cylinders, and they fill fill this void with with this uh, insulation material called expanded perlite, and they have reached uh, insulation properties which are six times more efficient compared to the, for example, to the mineral wool, which is util utilized in the uh, in the buildings. So it's really efficient uh, insulation. And for this vacuum super insulation uh, solution, the metal, metallic cylinders are, are carrying the loading, loading, loading what comes from the pressure under pressurizing. But, but our, in our solution, as we are utilizing wood as a, as a frame material, uh, the, the wooden frame can be designed in a way that the frame itself doesn't conduct 
that much heat. So the wood is actually the super material uh, which, which should be utilized in order to transfer this vacuum super insulation technology into the buildings. So with wood, we can we can manufacture this this like um, rectangular shaped elements, and also to utilize this phenom of vacuum super insulation. So so this kind kind of rectangular elements could not be manufactured out of metal because metal conducts so much thermal energy. But wood is strong and it conducts really little of thermal energy. So, so the, actually, the plywood is the is the best best material to to manufacture this element frame. So this is something we noticed noticed during the developing years. So this is something we aim to aim to achieve also in the future. So, so now now we utilize the vacuum only for the for the moisture moisture removal uh, uh, maintenance service. Uh, it's called vacuum drying. Uh, but in the future, we also aim to reach these this, uh, super insulation properties for the element. And also, if we reach this, uh, this also means that we, we could adjust the pressure states inside the element and play with these uh, insulation properties of the element. So, so whenever we know that, for example, in Finland, uh, the, the next week will be really cold, we could simply underpressurize our, our elements for this becoming weak and, and enjoy enjoy this super insulation properties of this element. So we, we are talking about dynamic insulation for buildings, which is not it's not uh, uh, functional today. So so this is the this is the future we can see in our technology also in, on top of utilizing wood as much uh, as much we are. In, in really humid environment. So this was this was my part and here is my contacts.